New York she fought for after 9-11. You talk to any soldier in the 10th Mountain Division. She won't forget you. And it's easy to forget you. It's easy to think you are somebody when you're president. Seriously. I mean, think what it's like being president. They play hail to the chief every time you walk in the room. For eight long years, they played a song every time I walked in the room. I was completely lost for three weeks after I left the White House. Nobody played a song anymore. I didn't know where I was. Washington's a traffic nightmare. You know that if you've been there. For everybody but the president, he just zips along the bulletproof limo. Don't even stop at red lights. You don't have any commuting time to work at the world's most famous office. Every night you go to bed in America's finest public housing. Your airplane is so cool, people make movies about it. We're laughing, but you get the point, don't you? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. You, you get the point. It's easy to get carried away, but if you do, it can be a disaster. The president is nothing more than the most fortunate public servant on the face of the earth. That's all. And nothing more. Nothing more. That's the last thing I'll say. I never met anybody better at her than this. I never met anybody that had a better heart, that had more feet on the ground, that I trusted more to always be there for you. I literally wept this summer like a baby standing on a golf course when a caddy stopped me and told me that in his real life he was a captain of the New York City Fire Department who thought he was a Republican before 9-11 until his president told him that none of them could get sick because of what they breathed. You remember when they were working at 9-11 and what you saw? Asbestos, PCBs, and benzene, three well-known cancer-causing agents. This guy stopped me on the golf course. He said, your wife, my senator, was the first person who knew that many of us could get sick and some would die. And when the White House said no, she said yes, and she stood there and fought for us, and we got the help we needed, and some of us who would have died are alive. And he said, those of us who didn't make it, those of us who didn't make it, even we knew, our families knew that the Congress honored our service. He said, I know nothing about politics. I don't know what I think anymore, but I do know this. That's the kind of person who ought to be president. Somebody who knows what it's like to be me. And that's what I say to you. When all of this is said and done, when it's over, think about how you will know if the president succeeded. Think about how you'll know when it's over. Because I promise you, you're thinking about this now in future ways, it'll be over like that. <laughs> You'll be my age before you know it. <laughs> it'll be over. So I asked Hillary this question. You know what she said? I said, Hillary, if you get lucky enough to get elected, how are you going to know if you did a good job? She said, I will believe I did a good job if I can say when it's over. The American people are better off when I quit than when I started. Our children, our children and grandchildren have a much brighter future. And our country and the world are coming together instead of being torn apart. If you want the answers to those questions to be yes, let Pennsylvania say yes to Hillary. Thank you.